Let's continue with our validator class and the validate method. Within the promise, we are going to start by declaring three constants. So constant, and I'm going to put them all on new lines. So first one will be rules, and we are going to pull rules from the validation back. So it's going to be this validation back, and we need to get them using the index, which is represented by the field name. So field, then the next one will be rules count which will tell us how many rules there are for a given field and here we're going to use rules and simply length property and the last constant will be the value which we'll obtain using get value method which we'll create in just a moment so this get value and we pass field as an argument okay so before we do anything else after the validate method let's create this get value one so get value and it takes field as an argument and within this method, we are going to start by returning field, and then we are going to split this field using full stop. Now, why are we doing this? It is because some of the field names will have the following format. Address, uh, town, for instance. So address will, in this case, be representing the array of items, town, postcode, line one, line two, and so on. So now we are splitting the name of this field and we will have an array. So for instance, for our address town, we would get something like address and then town as the next item in this array. So now that we split it and we have an array available, we are going to use reduce methods. So reduce and reduce takes two arguments. First one is a function, so uh, which will take two arguments, a q mu later is the first one and the other one's current value now current value will be represented by the item through which we are currently iterating obviously this is going to return array and with each of these items we're going to get different current value and a second argument to this method is going to be a value that will be passed through uh, this callback function as a first argument the first time around whatever we're going to put here this accumulator will equal to so in other case we are going to use fields property so this fields and from within this callback function we are going to return accumulator and the current value which will be representing the given index of this accumulator let me demonstrate in another file what's actually going to be happening with each iteration so when we submit the form, the fields will be represented by the field name and the associated value. When we're going to have an array, we will have the index again, and then the value will be represented by the object, like for instance, town, postcode, and so on. Now, when we pass the field for the validation, it will be represented by the string. In this case, to get town of the address array, we will have it as address full stop town. So this is why we are splitting the field here using this full stop. This will give us an array. So address town splitting by full stop will return array of address and town. Now, with each of these items, when we're reducing, we are looping through each item of this array. So first time we're going to have address as the current value. Second time around, we're going to have town. With the first iteration, the current value will be the address and accumulator will be whatever the fields contain. In this case, we will have index first name, then we're going to have index address with the object. And what this return method will return is the value of this address, because obviously the first current value is address, we are getting address from this object, which will be represented by accumulator, and we're getting this obviously using this current value. So what we're going to get from this first iteration is going to be this object. In other words, what we have here for the address. So the next time around with the second iteration, the accumulator will contain this object. So with the second iteration, when the current value is town, having the accumulator as this object with town and postcode, what it will return using this accumulator and current value, it will be the value associated with the index town, which is London. Back in our validator class, within the validate method after the declaration of the constant, let's start looping through the rules. So for let index in rules. 
And first we are going to check if we already haven't got a, an error for a given field. So if exclamation mark this errors has on property and we pass field as argument, if we don't have it yet, then let's first split the rules by colon because some rules may have something like minimum, for instance, one, then we're going to split it. So then there's going to be a rule and then there will be arguments for the given rule. So we are going to create two variables, let's, and we put them in the array. So rule params equals rules, and then we get the index through which we are currently looping and then split split it using colon symbol. So this will always return array. Sometimes params will obviously be undefined, but we always going to have a rule. For instance, if we have required, then when we split with the colon, it will return just rules, but params will be undefined. Okay, then we are going to use try and catch statement. For catch, we are going to catch error and we'll do the catch statement just a moment. First, before that, we are going to check if, and we don't have this class yet, but let's just pretend we do, exclamation mark rule, and we will be looking for the method by rule name, so rule, which we've obtained from our split here. So rule name will represent the method, and then we are going to pass two arguments to this callback function, the method on this rule object, which we don't have yet, we will pass value and then params again, which has have been obtained by using this split and colon. Again, sometimes these params will be just undefined. Some rules will only take value, value and will evaluate the value without using any additional params. So if the rule has failed, then we need to add it to our errors. This errors, we're going to use field name equals and which rule did it fail for. So rule associated with value for, for this given errors uh, index. And after this, we need to obviously reject because this uh, validation has failed. So reject and we're going to say your input was invalid. Now, sometimes we might by mistake put the rule which does not exist on this rule object. When that happens, this statement here will throw an error. That's why we're trying to catch it. And if that happens from within the catch, what we're going to do is reject it as well using message uh, invalid form validation rule. And let's uh, provide the rule name so we know which one does not exist. And then let's just finish this reject statement. So what happens here, we are looping through all the rules for the given field. Uh, we are splitting each rule using this column because there will be multiple ones. Some of them may have some parameters that we need. Then we, within the try statement, we check in on this object rule for a method with the name of the rule. We pass in value and parameters, uh, additional parameters. Sometimes this may be undefined. And if this returns false, which means validation failed, then we are going to add this field to the errors with the rule associated. And then we obviously reject it, saying, obviously letting know that our promise all here that one of these fields, the one that we've currently have currently been uh, looping through, has failed because obviously we rejected it, in which case this catch statement will be executed rather than this then with the resolve. One last thing we need to do from within our for loop. After this if statement, let's check if we are looking through the last item in this rules array. So if, and we're going to use parse integer, we're going to use index plus one because index starts with zero within the array. And we are trying to compare it to the length of the rules array, so rules count if it equals if it's uh, identical in this case then we're going to resolve it and we're going to resolve it because this means that unless one of these reject callbacks has been called then everything is fine the input is valid so we can resolve it and tell our promise all that for this field we have a valid input now our validator class is completed but we need to import this rule class, which we don't have yet. Before we do this, let's just quickly create this file under the validator 
directory so it's going to be called rule and let's leave it for now let's just import it quickly right above this export default class so import rule from and it's from a current directory so full stop for a slash rule so now this is going to be available within the validator we can save and close this file from within the rule let's just export default class rule and let's leave it for now we will deal with this class in the next video if you would like to learn more about the reduce method of the array object navigate to developer.mozilla.org where you'll find the full documentation for this method